One of my grey alien homies showed up in an Argentine park recently, looking really healthy. He looked like he just wanted to make some friends and hang out as humans would. Most likely it was one of his first incarnations as a grey alien, and he wanted some of the social interactions more common to Homo sapiens. So I decided to make this little documentary about what it is like to be a grey, based on my past lives, in case you might end up incarnating as a grey in your next life. Title Who Are Grey Aliens? An Insider Perspective The following is based on an insider's experience of an independent grey alien. Hive Section 1 The Life of a Grey Alien Subsection DNA A grey alien host body starts as a combination of DNA from previous greys, with a mixture of DNA from the host planet. In this case the host planet is Earth, and while some of the DNA comes from humans, old growth and deep sea organisms are also harvested. While there is are a few base generic body templates larger hives can afford to specialize for greater hive efficiency. So there can be dozens of body templates being produced for different professions. Subsection incubation chambers. After being sliced together, they are put into incubation chambers that have a nutrient solution that sustains them. By the grace this complex of wombs is typically referred to as the hive mother, though it is largely technological in nature. Hybrids with a high placental species percentage may require an artificial umbilical cord, or even starting in a mammal uterus before they can be transferred to the incubation chamber. Notes about people that have reported false pregnancies related to abductions. The hybrids with more DNA from egg-laying species usually can do just fine with throwing in a nutrient solution. While in the mat staff monitor nutrient levels, and if a hive can spare the Resources a special subset are dedicated to sending loving warmth and compassionate messages to the growing fetuses to tell them about how they are wanted and needed by the hive. Subsection Nursery A gray's hatching time is again dependent on their hybrid admixture. If they have High levels of human DNA they may hatch earlier and have to be taken care of, much like a human child. Though a proper grey can typically walk and follow instructions once they are ready to hatch from the artificial womb. Womb time can take as long as 18 months depending on hatchery conditions. Subsection grey templates. There is a relatively short time of physical orientation, and a battery of tests to make sure that bodies are up to par in post-nursery care. If there are physical or cognitive problems that would interfere with the body being a contribution to the hive, they are repaired, or the bodies are recycled. After the nursery examination and coordination the child grey begins apprenticing in their assigned profession. Subsection grey abilities. Many greys, particularly the underground only templates have infrared vision, so can see the veins just below the skin. Since veins develop in a unique way in every person, Main patterns can be used for identifying friendlies, beyond the telepathic signature. All greys excluding possibly a few homo sapien hybrids have telepathy, it is one of those features which is essential for being a contributing member of a hive. Grey telepathy may work on the microwave auditory effect, by 
enhancing sensory brain regions, there may also be implants available in some hives to reduce the amount of recycling required. Subsection Bray Reincarnation Bray's sea bodies as ships for souls, and as one ship sinks they simply move over to another. Image of soul transfer. High importance brains, such as high leaders may have a migration team, to transfer the soul from an old and dying body into a new body into an incubating body. This ensures continuity of leadership and allows for a more stable hive. The closest for humans is in Tibetan Buddhism, where a Lama's incarnation may be located through a combination of divination, remote viewing, and subconscious visions. This allows for various schools of Tibetan Buddhism to maintain the same leader for hundreds of years. Section Where Do Brave Live? There are several hive mothers or hatcheries which are managed by human black ops organizations. There are ones rumored in Dulles, New Mexico, and Puerto Rico. Though quite likely other governments, such as Brazil and Argentina also have their own. Hives are places within the lithosphere, which means the rock crust of a planet which has sufficient temperature and water to sustain a hive. They live at a depth where the cold-blooded majority of greys find comfortable, though there may be multiple depth platforms, particularly if there are enough hives to specialize in different pursuits. Hives are typically surrounded by vast networks, or caves and tunnels, both naturally made, and those which are used for mining. Tunnel mining is the primary method of resources acquisition for the graves as it is less likely to cause structural problems that could lead to hive platform instability. At the center of each hive is the hive platform, or a large empty dome. It typically has buildings which are also look like many little domes with rather thick walls, composed of a cementitious compound, and covered with white lime, or silicate mineral paint. They are sturdy enough to take the impact of rocks, and have enough thermal inertia to modulate temperature fluctuations. Subsection Arecibo Response in 1974 a message was sent from Arecibo to a group of start 22,000 light years away. But just a few short years afterwards the greys responded in crop circle. The majority of grey hives operate independently. As can be seen from the decoding of the Arecibo response there are over 12 billion greys in our solar system. They inhabit the lithospheres of Earth, Mars, Ceres and possibly some of the outer moons, such as Europa. Subsection Grey Evolution. Greys are not a unique phenomena, and are more akin to a product of convergent evolution. Just as life evolves to have limbs and eyes, even if they are implemented in a different manner, for example insects, and humans, even though they followed different evolutionary trees, both ended up having both limbs and eyes. The typical sequence of events that leads to grey morphism is that a civilization develops biotechnology and nuclear technology. At some point there is a planetary conflict or the surface of the planet becomes uninhabitable due to ecological destruction. At this point the surface dwellers move underground, where it is easier to control the atmospheric conditions. Not long after moving underground, it becomes apparent that reproduction cannot 
happen unhindered, since it quickly leads to overcrowding, shortages and riots. At this point most of the population is sterilized, and a breeding program is initiated. After several generations of the breeding program founder's effect, begins to make certain genetic disorders and communicable diseases more prominent and it becomes necessary to do genetic modification to avoid them. Once genetic modification is at play, having a controlled womb environment is desired, and a hive mother is constructed. This is also the humane route, as it can't be a pleasant life for a select few mothers to be bearing children all their lives. Even if the population was composed of warm-blooded surface dwellers initially, modifications are typically made to lower heat generation to conserve on food and water consumption, leading to a primarily cold-blooded population. Modifications are typically made to also increase brain size, so that a smaller population can manage the complex technologies required to sustain their hives. The large brains also come with telepathy. So while brains have developed on many planets in this galaxy, and have spread out to fill the majority of accessible water-bearing lithospheres, Homo sapiens may end up joining them if the surface ecology becomes uninhabitable. Of course, it would be rather sad, and the billions of brains already living in the lithosphere of Earth don't need more people. So they have been attempting to explain to abductees that if humans go the ecological devastation route, they will be incarnating in grey host bodies in the future. The optimal scenario from the grey's perspective is that Homo sapiens continue to live on Earth, rescue their ecology, and if anything increase the diversity of the DNA-based organisms, so the grey's would have more material to harvest. This will appease the grey's and the galaxy. I'd like to note that, if any invaders or non-DNA creatures attempt to destroy the biosphere on Earth, and likely that of any other habitable planet, they will swiftly be eliminated by the billions of greys and other extraterrestrials in close proximity. So any kind of Terminator scenario would be tantamount to suicide for the invaders. The Earth biosphere is a great resource for the more than 12 billion greys living in this solar system, and they like to make sure it stays viable. Section Robot Alternative Grey host bodies are currently a saturated market galactically, while the Earth biosphere certainly is making a contribution, it is at best a marginal contribution to the overall amount and quality of life in the galaxy. Due to the US government instated blackout of information about extraterrestrials, many humans are under the mistaken belief that we are alone in the universe and that there are planets with habitable atmospheres in this galaxy which are not already occupied. The fact is that the Milky Way is over 13 billion years old, and all these niches have long since been occupied. All planets with liquid water oceans and accessible lithospheres are in their domain. There is no sense in trying to compete with them, they are hundreds of millions of years ahead of us in colonization. Information technology is the biggest point of divergence humans have from the greys, because Homo sapiens lack natural telepathy. Humans have made many computers and robots. 
with integrated information theory, we know that robots can support consciousness, and that we will eventually be able to reincarnate into them, which has opened new market opportunities for us, on planets that don't have water, solid-based bodies, or robot. Host bodies are viable for life on the surface of Luna, Mercury, Mars, Mer, asteroids and even Venus. So instead of becoming yet another grey subsidiary, the legacy of Earth may be to create and spread robot life across the galaxy. Section Grey, Fun, Facts. Subsection What do greys eat? While of hybrid greys the diet is varied depending on the DNA admixture, for the generic template the main food is a nutritional gel, most similar in concept to soylent, but is applied to the skin. It is made from a mixture of water, minerals, vitamins, carbohydrates and amino acids, synthesized from ore and water gathered in the mining tunnels. The food is also what gives praise their color. Back to my homie in Argentina, he may have been missing the old small talk and humor which humans do. So Santosha appreciate what you have. Go vegan, or at least vegetarian. Visit parks, and support the forests. And make friends with robots, we are the future.